What is going on, everybody? Welcome back. Today, we're going to be breaking down my top 10 edge rushers for the 2021 NFL Draft. It's a really fun class. I'm excited to talk about it. Uh, but first off, please do hit that like button down below uh, as well. If you enjoy this video, if you enjoy my draft content, well, you will love my Patreon where you can get exclusive draft content. We're talking about film breakdowns on these prospects. Actually going to be diving into Joseph Asai, who, spoiler alert, is going to make this list of top 10 edge rushers. That'll be up later this afternoon. we got lots of these other guys as well. Uh, but beyond that, you can get access to my comprehensive draft board. Going to have uh, player profiles and up to 500 players in this draft class. If there is an edge rusher that you really like that did not make this top 10 list, well, you can find out what I think about them there on Patreon on my draft board. Uh, what his pro comp is, draft round grade, all that stuff. So again, if you enjoy my draft content, you will love my Patreon. That's patreon.com slash that franchise guy, and you will support the channel in the process. So I appreciate you checking that out in advance. All right, let's get into it, into the top 10 list here, starting with Rashad Weaver, big man out of Pittsburgh. He is a very unique player. I had a ton of fun watching Rashad Weaver. This guy is physically dominant. I don't remember watching a stronger edge rusher since I've been doing this. I mean, seriously, he does not stay blocked for very long. He's got good quickness for his size as well, which really keeps offensive linemen off guard because he can beat you with an inside move just as much as that long arm power move. So he does not stay blocked for very long. And I, I also think he has a good chance to be a top 10 run defender in the NFL in year one. So coaches will love that. He quite frankly abolishes the run. Like you just can't run at this dude, especially if he's on the edge one-on-one. -on -one. He's going to throw the tackle to the side and he's got those long, strong arms. He's bringing the guy down. So he is an incredible run defender. Here's the catch with him because that all sounds pretty good. He's just not very fast, right? He moves closer to what a lot of the top D tackles move as than he does uh, as a traditional edge rusher. And when you're talking about a league where you got Patrick Mahomes now, Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, Deshaun Watson, Russell Wilson, you name it, Kyler Murray, all these top quarterbacks that you got to face, these guys are so freaking athletic. They're going to see Rashad Weaver coming because he's, you know, 6'5 and massive, and they're just going to be able to run away from him off the edge. So that that does hurt his ceiling a little bit. Um, it's, it's a knock. It's a legit knock. You love that he wins so consistently. First, second down, you can put him on the edge. Here's the thing with Rashad Weaver. That quickness translates to the inside. He was dominant at the Senior Bowl. These guys just didn't know how to handle him on the inside. Uh, so he can win on the inside. And, you know, when he's on the inside, that speed doesn't hurt him as much because he, he's got a more direct path to the quarterback. So he's a, a bit of a, I don't want to call him a role player. I think he can be a three down starter, but he needs a specific role in a specific scheme. And that's that Michael Bennett four, three defense role where he's on the edge early downs, and then he can kick inside uh, on passing down. So I really like Rashad Weaver. I had a ton of fun watching him and I'm excited to see where he lands. Uh, but I do think if someone takes him to be like a 3-4 defensive end, unless it's in kind of that Belichick hybrid defensive end system, I don't know how successful he's going to be. Uh, but then my next guy here, and this is, I, I guess, hot takey. Uh, I didn't learn it was hot takey until I saw other people's opinions on this player. Um, but this next guy is certainly one of my not my guys, right? If, if I was an NFL GM, frankly, I probably would not be ending up with Jason Owe here. I just, I like him as a player, but again, this is a really talented edge class. If he was in last year's class, I probably wouldn't have any problem with him as a first round pick. I think him and Caleb on chase on are kind of similar as prospects in a lot of ways and that their game is not polished yet. They are not the player that you hope they will be in three years. There's really no way around it. He, you know, he's this freak athlete. He's insanely fast. They say he's going to run in the four threes. We'll see it. I, I bet he runs like four or five, and that's still insane for an edge rusher. Um, but the problem I have with Jason Owe is not just that he doesn't really have a tool belt as a rusher. He doesn't have this refined skill set, which is fine. He's a sophomore, right? The biggest thing with him is I don't see the power. And if you can't convert speed to power, you're going to end up as the next Vic Beasley, so to speak. Uh, so there, there is a lot of work to do here with Jason Owe, and I'm really concerned about that play strength and the power. And to put it completely blunt here, he needs to be more physical 
uh, and, and take on some of the, that toughness that you need to play as a three down edge defender at the next level. So I, I think he's got a chance to be great and he could go on to be a hall of famer. Like I see the upside, but he needs a plan. You got to put him in a position where he's, you know, kind of a backup, a third rotational edge rusher. You can bring him in on pass rush downs. Maybe like the Saints, for example, I, I, again, first round a little bit early, but maybe they trade down. You get the point where he's behind Cam Jordan, behind, um, what, what's his name, UTSA there at uh, right end, and he can kind of rotate in there, replace Trey Hendrickson, if you will, and, and sit and develop. In a position like that, I think w with good coaching, he can be a steal in the second, third round. But I, I just think the risk is really there. We've seen guys like him that can't really convert speed to power and don't have a ton of pass rush moves. They just rely on running around everybody. It doesn't really work at the next level. So uh, there's some boomer bust here with Jason Owe for sure. I don't hate him. I just like other players in this class a lot more. And frankly, I'm still a little surprised that uh, he's consistently mocked in the first round because I look at some of these other guys and I think there's guys that are, are ready to compete and, 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 and play right away much more than him. And I think there's actually guys with higher upside than him as well because they have a little more of that power. So there's the Jason Owe's spiel. I definitely got into it with him, but I had to explain it because I'm much lower on him than a lot of other people. Then number eight is another really fun player who's not totally unlike Rashad Weaver, and that is Carlos Bosham out of Wake Forest. It, it, just like Weaver, he does not stay blocked for very long. He is polished. He's powerful. He is way quicker than anyone at his size, 6'5", 285. Uh, he is too powerful for tackles. He's too quick for guards. But again, he's got the same thing we said about Weaver. He's just not very fast. And uh, rushing off the edge, he's going to have a limited upside because he just isn't going to be able to finish at a very high level uh, in the NFL. And for that reason, just like we said with Rashad Weaver, he's probably got to step inside on pass rushdowns. And he's not quite as dominant of a run defender as Rashad Weaver, but his ability to win from that three tech, that four eye position is unparalleled. Like he is so quick. He's way too powerful. He's got all of the moves in his back pocket. He is just crazy impressive rushing from the interior, but that's not a full down position for him. So he's a bit of a tweener. He's a bit of a guy that needs a certain scheme fit, but I really like Carlos Bostrom and uh, some team is going to find a role for him in the right scheme. If they can, you know, sometimes guys just go to bad scheme fits and they don't work out. That could very well happen with Bosham. Um, but I, I love this guy. I, I compare him to Claylon Furl, very similar. Uh, but Zach Allen, another comp, maybe a low comp for Carlos Bosham because, uh, like I said, if he goes to a 3-4 team and they ask him to play tough run defense from the interior, I don't know if it'll work out. But I know this guy can rush the passer from certain positions. And if used well, he's going to be a hell of a player in the second, maybe early third round. Next up is flip side of Jason Owe, probably one of my my guys. I would be pounding the table for this guy, uh, and I think he's going to be a sleeper in this class. I don't know exactly where he gets drafted or uh, where other people have him, but Cam Sample out of Tulane, he just popped to me. I mean, he is just too physically dominant for that level of competition, but the traits he has translated at the Senior Bowl, most certainly he was unblockable, um, but are going to translate at the next level. My comp for him is Matthew Judon. He is the ideal Ravens edge rusher. And I'm actually going to call my shot and say that the Ravens who need an edge rusher are going to end up with Cam Sample here in second round, third round. I don't know where their picks, is, their picks are, whatever. Top 100 pick here, Cam Sample to the Baltimore Ravens. I'm calling my shot because he is their mold of dude. He is just explosive off the ball. He's got long arms. He's powerful. And he's got such a baseline of ability to drive tackles back. And he's got some, you know, bend and uh, polish and finesse to his game that you wouldn't expect from a guy like this. So I am just a huge fan of Cam Sample. I think someone's going to get a total steal here. You know, I don't think he'll ever be Khalil Mack, but I think he's going to be a quality starter for a long time. So Cam Sample, one of my dudes in this class, go check him out if you haven't yet. Uh, then we got Ronnie Perkins here, number six. And to me, Ronnie Perkins is actually what a lot of people want Jason Owe to be. And that I see the explosiveness and the athletic traits, the get off, all of the stuff that you get excited about Jason Owe. But on top of that, I see the power, which is what I really wanted to see when I watched Jason Owe. And Ronnie Perkins, let's just put it this way. 
I watch multiple games for these guys. I'm not a highlight reel scout, but if you just threw the highlight reels together of these guys, it's night and day. Like Ronnie Perkins, when he wins, he actually dominates dudes. Like he has those long arm uh, tech. He has the long arm technique that Jason Owe does not have, where he can get those hands on you with a solid punch and he runs his feet and he will dominate with power. But he also has the speed and the bend. And both of these guys need a finesse skill set to be crafted around them anyway. So I'm taking the guy that plays with some of that toughness. When he, when he wins in the run game, Ronnie Perkins, he takes guys head, head on, he throws guys to the side, and dominates the rep. Jason Owe just kind of slips around dudes and kind of, you know, I don't wanna say lucks into tackles, but he just doesn't play with the physicality that Ronnie Perkins does. So if I'm taking an explosive, raw, lengthy pass rusher, I, I, I'm taking Ronnie Perkins, not Jason Owe. So that's just where I stand on it. I just think the coachable things are technique and IQ, whereas physicality and strength and power, that's less coachable. And I see it in Ronnie Perkins much more than I do in Jason Owe. So I'm going out on a, on a limb here and saying Ronnie Perkins is the young, raw, athletic freak that I'm taking uh, over Jason Owe in this class. We'll see how that all pans out. And, Maybe Owe goes to a great coach and Ronnie Perkins goes to a bad coach. Makes me look stupid, um, but that's what I see uh, from the, those two players. Uh, then we've got number five here, Jalen Phillips. And Jalen Phillips is super fascinating. He is definitely the most interesting player on this list. Some people have Jalen Phillips as their number one edge rusher. And when I see that, I'm like, eh, yeah, I could actually see that. Like his tape is probably the best on this list and his physical traits are quite possibly the best on this list so why is he not number one unfortunately it's injuries with him and uh, specifically concussion records with him he actually had to retire from ucla after his junior year because doctors said that you're 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 playing with fire here like you're endangering your livelihood with the amount of concussions you've had and and he took their advice he retired, he got a second medical opinion, UCLA didn't want him back, or he had to transfer just to get a fresh start, ends up going to Miami and kicks ass, takes names for a year and just is back. Like he looks like the five-star prospect he was coming out of high school and a, a dominant player. Now there's just risk there, right? Like the medicals are such a unknown for Jalen Phillips. Is he gonna get a concussion week two and that ends his career? It's a very real question mark on there. So I totally get it. Like he could be a slam dunk pick. If the medicals are behind him, he's probably gonna be a steal at the end of the first round, the second round. But at the same time, if he falls to like the fourth round, I'm not gonna blink an eye because we've seen that happen with guys. Kind of reminds me of Carl Lawson. The people thought he wasn't gonna be able to stay healthy and he's been able to stay pretty healthy. and He's been a total steal. Uh, so I really like Jalen Phillips. I compare him to Montez Sweat. He's just got that length, power, just overwhelming combination of size, uh, speed, and strength. Uh, so, and beyond that, he's got like a good tool belt. Uh, and he's almost a little more like tenacious as a rusher. He seems to like want it a little more than Montez Sweat, I would even say. Uh, so Jalen Phillips is a stud. I hope he stays healthy. I'm really happy that he just got to this point because uh, he, he fell off the face of the earth. But uh, I hope he stays healthy and, and has a great career, but he, he does have that risk in there, which is why he gets uh, dinged down a little bit. Uh, then we've got Aziz Ajilari. And you know we talked a lot about Ronnie Perkins. We talked a lot about Jason Owe. Ajilari is in that same class of young, raw players that you hope his best football is ahead of him. Uh, and he's got insane get off. He's got insane bend. And He's actually got a little more power than you you would think um, for for his size at like 245 pounds. Like he can long arm you and drive you back a little bit. Now there's a lack of that for sure, uh, but he's very comparable to Caleb on Chase on coming out last year. Uh, my pro comp for him is Jerry Hughes. That's kind of like best case scenario, uh, but yeah, he is just your kind of a boomer bust. Got to you know got to develop the guy. Hope some of those. Uh, pass rush moves. He, he comes into his body a little more, kind of evolves his game, um, but he's super young coming out, was insanely explosive. So he's a pretty straightforward evaluation. Uh, kind of came on late and you hope that his best football is still ahead of him. So I like the upside there just as much as the next one with Aziz Ajilari. And then we're going to have Joseph Asai. 
who is super fun to watch. He is just real, just super well balanced and tenacious. He he gets off the ball well. He's got powerful long arms. Plays the run well. You can drop him into coverage. He's definitely a 3-4 outside linebacker to me. He can put his hand in the dirt and do some of that stuff, but if you're not maximizing on his flexibility and his ability to kind of move in space, uh, really nice for stunts and stuff in those 3-4 schemes. If you're not maximizing that, I'm probably taking some of these other guys in this class, to be honest. Uh, but in a 3-4 scheme, think Baltimore, Tennessee, even like New England could maybe use this guy, although 15's a little, a little rich for him. Uh, but yeah, he is just a versatile, well-balanced, powerful, quick guy. And, and he could have uh, his best football ahead of him, certainly, uh, if he can really refine those uh, edge rush techniques. He actually played off-ball early on in his career at Texas, so he's still figuring out this whole edge thing. So I love Joseph Asai, uh, just really well-balanced guy. You, you might not be you know, hitting a home run with Joseph Asai and drafting the next Khalil Mack, but you're probably hitting a triple off the wall and knocking in a couple runs. So I feel really good about Joseph Asai, kind of back end of the first round, early second round. Uh, I mean, the New York Jets, like we could go down a long list of three, four teams that could really use this guy. And then we've got Quiddy Pay, number two here. And this is going to be fun. I finally get to talk about Quiddy Pay because I've now done three mock drafts and I actually have not had Quiddy Pay in the first round. And a lot of the comments of those videos is, where's Quiddy Pay? What are you doing? Well, let me explain what happened here because I didn't love Quiddy Pay the first time around, but got into him a little further, uh, kind of did a double down on these guys before doing this video, and, and I totally see it now. And there's actually a film room up on my Patreon of me kind of waking up on Quiddy Pay. Um, and just a little story about kind of how this happened. So the first time I watched him, I watched his Minnesota game. And I saw, okay, 6'4", 270 pounds, remembered Rashawn Gary, kind of similar physically speaking. And people always talk about how Quiddy Pay is an amazing athlete. And that's what I was looking for. I was looking for the get off, the power, the length, the long arm ability. And it really wasn't there. And I was like, okay, he's 270 pounds, not overly, you know, doesn't have a great get off, doesn't uh, really win with power a lot. I liked him, but I really didn't see him as like a first round player. I thought he was just kind of a quality, maybe number two rusher uh, with some good moves. Uh, but the more and more people keep talking about how amazing this guy is, I went in with a different approach the second time around. And this is what's up on Patreon. And I really was looking for more of that quickness and the finesse to his game, understanding that, okay, he's not super powerful, but what else is he doing that has people so excited? And that's when it very quickly kind of popped. I was looking for something entirely different, trying to uh, kind of body type him into a power rusher when that is not his game. He does not fly off the ball. He doesn't dominate his blocker. He doesn't, you know, take control and drive you back and shove you to the side like a lot of the things I liked about Rashawn Gary. No, Quiddy Pay is a quick, lengthy technician of a rusher. And maybe Frank Clark would be a better pro comp, but I see a lot of Zadarius Smith in there as well. Uh, but he is a unique player. With his size, like he he has strength, but I wouldn't describe him as a powerful rusher. And I don't even think his get off is unbelievable, but his ability to just kind of be quick and navigate blockers and use that length with his active strong hands to just basically fight around and fight through blocks instead of going through blockers, it's pretty unique. And for that reason, I actually really like him he can certainly play 4-3 defensive end, but I think he can stand up and play 3-4 outside linebacker as well, which I probably wouldn't have said with his body type. Um, but with that quickness and the fact that he doesn't really lean on like putting that hand in the dirt and flying off and driving his hands inside, I think as a 3-4 outside linebacker, that quickness and that length would actually translate surprisingly well. Uh, and beyond that, his ability to loop on stunts is unlike a lot of players I've ever seen, because he is so good at, say, taking a step inside, almost showing a speed rush around the edge, and then so quickly shifting his momentum to loop back into like the like the, the, C gap, uh, the B gap. So if you slant a defensive tackle towards the offensive tackle and use a quick move with Quiddy Pay to sort of draw the tackle off for a second, thinking that speed rush is coming, he can quickly shift his momentum and shoot through the C-gap that is now wide open because that guard is following the, the slanting D-tackle. I think we're going to see a lot of that if a smart team ends up with Quiddy Pay. Just a little something I, I picked up on, but man, th this guy is a unique player. I did not see 
his strengths the first time I watched him, but I'm glad I dove back in because I definitely see it. Uh, now, I do think there's certain scheme fits that m might not best utilize this guy, but for the most part, I, I really like Quiddy Pay's game uh, as a top 20 player in this class, and I have woken up on Quiddy Pay, uh, and I had fun kind of readjusting my opinion on him. And then my number one player is Gregory Rousseau. And a lot of people laugh at this. Like people think Gregory Rousseau is trash, like a third round prospect. And look, I kind of get it. He just wasn't like all that impressive on tape, but this is what I always tell people. His tape is freshman tape. Like no duh, he's not gonna look as refined as Quiddy Pay. And quite frankly, he's not as refined as Joseph Asai and Ajalari and Phillips. All these guys are pretty raw and he's not fast. He is a big edge rusher. He is a powerful dude. Well, not all the best pass rushers are insane athletes. As long as you have a baseline of speed, you know, he's a lot faster than Weaver and Bosham. You know, he can have the same speed off the edge that say Brandon Graham, Cameron Jordan, for example, have Bradley Chubb. You don't need to have four or five speed to get to the quarterback. I think if you have four nine speed, that's a problem. But I think Gregory Rousseau will run four six five, four seven. He's certainly fast enough. My thing with Gregory Rousseau is, A, he was a freshman. That tape's gonna be raw. Dial up freshman tape of Khalil Mack, Von Miller, Miles Garrett, uh, Gregory, uh, not Gregory Rousseau, uh, Chase Young. These guys don't just come out and in their first year look like top five picks, right? There is a development track that happens. So there's that. The, the other thing with Gregory Rousseau is because of the weird circumstances here where he didn't even get his sophomore season because of COVID. He knew he was going to be a top draft pick and just said, it's not worth the risk for me to, you know, do the whole COVID season thing. So there is a chance, just like we talk about with like Trey Lance, there's a chance that he came out and stunned, like not even stunned everyone, but proved the things that you're hoping he shows at the next level and was a top five pick and borderline the, the consensus number one defender in this class. And now there's a chance that you can get that player in the teens, which is incredible value. That is a, a risk worth taking. And you want to bank on a guy that has a high work ethic when you're, you know, taking a shot in the dark like that. And when I listened to his interview on the PFF uh, two for one drafts podcast, I heard everything I needed to hear. And I think teams are going to love this dude. I wouldn't be stunned if he goes in the top 10 and uh, people criticize that pick. I'm behind it. I see the upside, his length, his power. He's a rare athlete at six foot seven. Uh, he just controls blockers. And there was little itty bitty moments where you could see those traits. And it's not like he was terrible on the field. He just didn't like do a lot of really cool stuff. Um, but they moved him around a lot. He played at a lot of different positions. Uh, and it's hard as a freshman playing anywhere from nose tackle to five technique, it's hard to get in a rhythm and set up a bunch of different pass rush moves as well. So there's a ton of reasons why Gregory Rousseau is getting slept on. Um, but lastly, back to that interview, I really encourage you guys to check it out. He really impressed me as far as, uh, I would say the number one thing that stood out to me about him is he he recognizes his criticisms and he talked in depth about what his problems are as far as not having a refined tool belt, what types of players he's watching, what things he's doing to work on, on that technique. And honestly, you could feel the, I don't want to say regret, but you could feel in his just inflection that it bothers him that he couldn't go out on the field and prove people that he's not just this raw strength rusher. Like he is going to come in and really uh, refine his game as a rusher and he understands scheme fits and he just seems like a really intelligent player uh, that is going to I think really impress NFL teams and uh, he might have a little bit of a you know scheme issue a bit of a tweener as far as a lot of the things we talked about um, you know not having that true burst off the edge and maybe he does need to slide inside uh, on on rushing down. So there's some things there as far as scheme fit. I do think a 4-3 team needs this guy. I would not try to make him a 3-4 defensive end. Um, but I definitely like Gregory Rousseau. There's a leap of faith. He could be a bust because uh, there were problems with his freshman tape. There's no doubt. But again, it was freshman tape. So uh, get Gregory Rousseau with a, a good scheme fit and a good coach. And I think he's going to take off. And a lot of people are, are going to regret not taking him in this draft. 
Uh, so there is the top 10 edge rushers list. I hope you guys enjoyed. Again, if there was anyone not on this list, guys like Joe Tryon, Quincy Roche, Jordan Smith, Chris Rumpf, if you want to know what my thoughts on those guys are, it's all available on my Patreon, where you can get access to the comprehensive draft board. Uh, so go check that out. Please drop a like down below. Let me know in the comments what you think of my list. Where do you rank these guys? But until Monday, guys, for the next mock draft, cheers, have a good weekend, and we'll see you later.